book besties welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is ash and you are watching smoke shelves today i have a book haul for y'all because i have been slowly collecting books as i've been here in the uk so i'm just going to share with the stack of eight books that i have gathered in the last month and a half or so. I had a list of books that I wanted in the UK edition specifically and I had just been like hunting down those specific books. I sidetracked a little bit like a tad and got a few books that were on the list and so I still have a couple left on my list but I'm trying to not spend any more money on books but I'm just finally that I was able to get them. I know I could have done like Blackwells or stuff but I'm here so I just waited. Let's get started. So I've taken three different trips to bookstores in the past month. I actually had planned to go again, but school has gotten in the way. It's fine. I will go to another store eventually, but I have gone to Blackwell's, Waterstones, and then I went to Lighthouse Books. So I was able to go to those three, and I hope to go to Portobello Bookshop and Armchair at some point. If you're at all familiar with any bookshops in Edinburgh or in the surrounding areas that I can get to on a bus, please let me know, because I could really use more like any bookshops in my life. Let's start off with my first trip. I live around the corner from Blackwell's and I picked up three books. The first book that I picked up was Starless Sea. Now this book, I'm I'm in love with this cover. I love the UK edition so much more than the US edition. I'll pop up the US edition here and it's fine. I don't mind it. The keys are nice, but I think the B edition is a lot more stunning. It's like watercolor. And so I picked this up. Let me read out the synopsis because I actually don't know what this is about. I just read The Night Circus three, four years ago at this point and really enjoyed it. When I saw that they were releasing this book, I had to get it, especially, especially with this cover. Oh, yeah, that looks great. Also, I love it. Anyways, when Zachary Rollins stumbles across a mysterious library book containing details from his own life among its pages, it leads him on a quest unlike any other. Following the clues inside, he is guided to a masquerade party in a dangerous secret club and finally to a labyrinth filled with stories, hidden far beneath the surface of, of the earth. But when the labyrinth is threatened, Zachary must race through its twisting tunnels and crowded ballrooms, searching for the end of his story. But yeah, all I knew about it was that it's a book inside a book, um, or a book about books. I haven't read too many books with that kind of concept of book inside a book, so I actually don't know if I like it yet or not, so maybe this will tell me. It was a buy two, get one free. All the books that I got were under the stamp for it, so I bought Passing Playbook, which I actually don't know what this one's about either. I've seen it around on Bookstra a lot and I know it's queer. That always gets bumped up on my list if I want it. Let me read the synopsis for this one. 15 year old Spencer is a proud nerd, an awesome big brother, and a messy in trading. He's also transgender. After a year of bullying, Spencer gets a fresh start at a new school with great friends, a spot on the boys' soccer team, and maybe even something more than friendship with one of his teammates. The only thing is no one knows Spencer's trance, he's passing. So when a discriminatory law forces his coach to bench him, Spencer has to make a choice. Cheers to mom from the sidelines or fight for his right to fight, even if it means coming out to everyone, including the guy he's falling for. Dot dot dot. And then it pitches it as Love Simon meets Friday Night Lights, but it's queer. So yeah, I did know it was trans rep and I knew it was an Achillean relationship. I'm excited for that. It's only like, it's only like 300 pages. It is exactly 300 pages with the acknowledgements. Very short, very, very small compared to like, oh no. Oh no, these are the same size. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> but it's small compared to like the US size, so she's just she's small compared to like US paperbacks. I think that'll be a nice, fun, quick read. So the last book I picked up at Blackwell's was Stay Gold, more trans rep. I have to see if this is like a US edition. No, it definitely isn't because I'm pretty sure the US edition is blue and gold. And this one's pink. And I like this one a lot, <laughs> a lot more. I, I don't really buy a lot of books based on synopsis. I like going in blind. So books like this, it's a beautiful cover. I've heard good things. I kind of know the like tagline, the pitch for it. So let me read it. Ooh, that is so hard to read. Pony plants a fly under the radar this year. Tired of getting too much attention at his old school after coming out as transgender, he's hoping for a fresh start at Hillcrest High Senior. But it's hard to live your best life with the threat of exposure lurking around every corner. <laughs> I'm not even done reading the excerpt, but these two are like new school, trans, old, coming out. Wow. I just, I think that's funny. I did not even realize I picked up like two very similar stories. They're not really similar. Anywho, back to it. Georgia is beginning to think there's more to life than cheerleading. She wants to keep a low profile until graduation, which is why she promised herself that dating is a no-go for the foreseeable future. Then on the very first day of classes, the new guy and the cheerleader lock, eye, lock eyes. In this moving, honest debut from Toby McSmith, one transformative relationship opens the eyes of the whole town and opens the door for Pony and Georgia to celebrate their truths, even when it feels hard. Also queer rep, I'm always looking for more queer rep on my shelves. I've really built a collection up in the last couple of years, which 
is so great to see. Hello, I didn't even mean jumping in here to say I completely forgot that I bought Ariadne. This absolutely stunning edition of Ariadne. I forgot I bought it. Yeah, I can't believe that happened. It's another Greek retelling. I'll just read up the synopsis. As princesses of Crete and daughters of the fierce and King Minos, Ariane and her sister Phaedra grow up hearing the terrible bellows of the Minotaur from the labyrinth beneath the palace. The Minotaur, Minos's greatest shame, and Ariane's, Ariane's brother demands blood every year. When Theseus, princess of, prince of Athens, arrives in Crete as a sacrifice to the beast, Ariane falls in love with him, but helping Theseus defeat the monster means betraying her family, and Ariadne knows that in a world ruled by mercurial gods, drawing their attention can cost you everything. Ariadne has heard too many tales of women being punished for the acts of men. She is determined to set her own fate, but will her decision to help Theseus ensure her happy ending, or will she find herself sacrificed for her lover's ambition? Anyways, I had nine books instead of eight, so I originally say eight, I think nine. The next book that I got was this, I don't think this play is doing it justice, Incredible edition of the Song of Achilles. I feel like I need to just show it all. And it has like a little, it looks so good. I've been wanting the Song of Achilles for a long time. The US edition, again, is just not pretty. So I was planning on just getting the regular UK edition and then this release, like maybe a couple months ago, not that much before I got here. So it just felt perfect. It felt like this was meant to get into my hands. If for some reason you don't know what this is about, but I feel like it's everywhere. It is a retelling of Achilles and Patroclus. I feel like I can always mess this up. Patroclus. Patroclus? Patroclus? Oh no. I don't know. The myth surrounding Achilles, if you know it, and the Trojan War, and I know this is gonna break my soul so I'm a little scared to pick it up. I also have Circe by Madeline Miller which I've never read. I'm so glad I picked up this 10th anniversary edition. I picked this up at Waterstones, obviously. It's a Waterstones exclusive. So now we're on the few that I bought at Waterstones, which I bought three at. The next thing I have is one that's a little bit outside my comfort zone, but is from a person that I admire and I would say is my idol, someone who I look up to. Yeah. So Fitter, Calmer, Stronger. Yes, yes, yes. Fitter, Calmer, Stronger by Ellie Golding. If you know a little bit about me, you know that she is my favorite singer. I admire all the work she does with climate and just promoting a healthy lifestyle and yeah. So it is a, I don't know if it's considered like a self-help or just non-fiction. I, I know there's like recipes in the back of this. I'm curious to see what else is in it because I assume there's a lot more towards exercising and just healthy lifestyle. I don't know if you can see that but signed by the author. I just happened to be in Waterstones. I wasn't actually expecting it to find it there. I almost bought it online to get it signed. Yep. And I'm literally looking at this and staring at my, my wall of Ellie Golding posters so very fitting. Oh wait, I should probably show. Let me show just one of the recipes. So yeah, there's a recipe in it. I'm excited to just have this around. The last book I got at Waterstones was one that I've been hoping to get for a very long time and it is Fae Silence and I've started tapping it at this point. Ooh, you can't even tell. Oh, you can kind of see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I've only like 30 pages in. I read Radio Silence way before I even would consider Osman as my favorite author and now I do. Yeah, so I picked up this copy. Stunning. Absolutely obsessed. And so I have this and my US edition now that I can cherish forever. If you didn't know what Radio Silence is about, I will do my best to explain it because I love this book so much and I feel like I can't explain it in justice. Basically, it's about Frances and Aled. Frances is the head girl of her school. Aled is, he goes to the boys' school that's their like adjacent school. They live down the street from each other and basically Frances's big hobby in life is to draw art for this podcast called University. And Frances gets petitioned to make art officially, not paid, but officially for the podcast. Yeah, I don't think I want to give too much more, but I don't even think the blurb gives too much more. Just know it's about Frances and Aled's friendship and them growing together and just the struggle of going to school and knowing whether uni is the place for them and just teenage life things. I love this book so much. I cannot do it justice. Please pick this up if you haven't. It is my all-time favorite book. I feel like I hype it up just enough. And so moving on to Lighthouse books, I picked up two books there. Both books that I want the UK edition. One, I'm very excited to have. To finish my Alice Oseman collection, I picked up Solitaire, which I think this is the one that was reprinted. This was their debut and she said she doesn't want to have Harry Potter in her references anymore, so she changed it out. Look at them. Happy to finally finish this. I have, I have to put up the cover. I have this edition and I don't know which edition this is. It's a really nice pink color. It actually matches my vibe of the day. <laughs> yeah, and I'm very excited to have it. Solitaire is their debut. It follows Tori Spring. At the start of the book, there is an anonymous hacker, bullier, prankster. I don't know what the term they really give it, named Solitaire 
that is basically causing mayhem at the school. Tori is trying to figure out what's going on. Then she meets someone named Michael. It follows them and their friendship. Please pick it up. Just just pick it up. If you're reading at Lois Roseman and if you want to read them in order, I will link like her website that she puts the timeline so you can see which ways to go in order. They're all standalones, but they kind of reference each other. If you want to read them in order, read this first, then go to Radio Silence. If you don't want to read them in order, start with Radio Silence. <laughs> it's my favorite one. The last book that I picked up was one book from an author I have enjoyed from before, but also have been very meh about from before. I debated picking up this, this specific book because I've heard that this might give me the vibes of the similar book that one of their other books had given me. I picked up The Invisible Life of Ellie LaRue because I love this edition more than the US edition. Common theme here. I didn't even realize how nice the under, dust, under the dust jacket is. That's really pretty. That really intrigued me. But I loved Vicious and Vengeful's. If you saw my Dark Activity vlog, I put that up here. Oh no, I'll put it up here. I just realized that the sticker doesn't come off. I loved Vicious and Vengeful. It's a favorite of mine. It's very good. But I very much disliked A Darker Shade of Magic, and I really disliked it for Lila mostly. I'm a little worried that I straight up just forgot the name of the main character. It's Addie. I'm a little worried that Addie's gonna be like Lila, so that makes me a little bit stressed out. If this is something you haven't read yet or heard of, it basically follows Addie, Addie's life as she makes a deal with, it's not really a devil, a dark entity, and is allowed to be immortal, but is forgotten by everyone she meets until she meets someone named Henry and he remembers her basically and it follows their journey. So that's the last book. A large stack of books. Oh god. Can I do it? Can I get the stack up again? Let's see if I can do it. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. A large stack of books that I have hauled in this past month and a half. Oh boy. Anyways, if you liked this book haul and you liked this video, please give this video a like and comment down below if you've read any of these books and which book I should read first. You hype it up and I will read it, maybe. <laughs> or I might do the opposite and just be like, no, I'm scared. If you really like my content, please consider subscribing. It would mean the world, the absolute world to me. And I will see you in my next video.